this uh, XKCD comment that anytime people come up or start talking about passwords, this invariably comes up. And uh, it's a bit text heavy and uh, maybe a little bit complex if you don't know passwords. So I'll just give you the basic idea is that you know, we've told people make your passwords really complex. The, the length isn't important, but you need to have all these different symbols and characters and things. But people aren't good at remembering that. So this Troubadour and 3, one that they've come up with, doesn't add a huge amount of uh, difficulty for a computer because it, the hackers know all the tricks that people use. Uh, so it makes it really hard for us to remember all those substitutions, but not, not too hard for them. Whereas if you go with something long, but uh, even simpler, it actually makes it harder for a computer to guess. And so that's the whole joke of the comic is that, as it says at the bottom, you know, 20 years of effort, we've trained people to uh, use passwords that are really hard to remember, but easy for computers. So obviously that's not, not a great situation. So uh, first thing I want to talk about is, uh, and, and we'll just be scratching the surface here. Um, it's only about 15 minutes talking about this part, then we'll get into the key pass part, uh, but it's it's interesting and, and important to know how these things are, are done, so you know why it's important to really uh, have good password policies. But uh, we'll just be scratching the surface. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. Uh, so when you store a password uh, in, a, in a computer program, it doesn't just store the plain text password because that would be a horrible security violation. Anybody with access can now see everybody's password. Uh, if it gets stolen, obviously all the passwords are out there. So they do something that's called hashing, where they run it through a function that takes any given input and puts out a fixed length output that's basically unique. It's not technically unique, but uh, very few collisions happen. And MD5 is an example of one, uh, and I've given you some ones here. We've taken password one, turned it into that long, nasty string. Password two, you notice it's just that one small change. It went from a one to a two, but hugely changed the hash in there, which is a good feature. So you can't use a previous one to guess the next one. And then a different length one down at the bottom that's more complex, still get the same kind of output. Now, uh, these are uh, those are what's actually stored in the database so that, that they don't have to keep your plain text password there. And uh, there's a bunch of different methods. The MD5 one I listed here is actually a, an old kind of poor method of doing it. Uh, and one kind of interesting note about that is faster is not always better in this. Uh, one of the better ones is uh, bcrypt, which is intentionally designed to be slow and computationally intensive so that when somebody's trying to crack it, they can't do it very fast. So if they get a hold of these things, you know, somebody's database still is stolen, like in the high profile uh, Ashley Madison one recently, or uh, the Rock U, or a bunch of other ones. Uh, well, what do they do with those? How, how do they get your password out of that? Because it's a one way thing. For example, if I told you, hey, here's the number 32, tell me how I got there. You don't know if I had 30 and added 2 to it and multiplied 8 by 4. You have no idea how to get there. Same idea with that. So the only way they can do it is by just trying passwords. So they'll, they'll take them, they'll re-encode them using that same method and see if it matches. And that's called brute forcing. And, and uh, they, uh, the number of pass passwords they have to try is the number of possibilities for each uh, part of your password, each character, raised to the, to the length of it, the power of the length. So as you can see, if you've only got lowercase, 26 characters, upper and lowercase, 52, and so on. And the symbols depend a little bit on the system, so you know, potentially 80 or, or so, but that, that's going to vary. But uh, so when, since you're raising that, you're know, multiplying the, the number for every one you add to the length, it ends up increasing the difficulty by a huge factor, 26, 52, or so on, for every time. And uh, just to put that in context, down at the bottom we've got password length. And, uh, and on the left is the number of possible passwords for that length. So you can see if you've got uh, that 80 uh, possibilities, that, that really strong, complex password, you get a ridiculous amount, even with uh, just an eight-character password, even with compared to uh, the other possibilities there, you get about 1.7 or so quadrillion possibilities. And that's just on an eight-character password. And here's viewing it a different way uh, where for all eight character passwords that's the the large area there is the complex 
number, uh, again, the number of, of complex versus the number of, uh, you know, uh, the green one would be slightly less complex. And when you get down to just lowercase, you can't even see it on there. It just, it basically disappears. It's such a small amount compared to these other ones. So that's the, the good news is you can do that. So all we have to do is just make it eight characters and, uh, and then it's a huge space, right? It's no, no big deal. Well, the problem, well, there are a bunch of problems, but, um, uh, the, the problem is that hackers are smart and lazy, and they're going to do all sorts of tricks to take care of this for you. Uh, they're going to use consumer level, uh, back up a little bit, consumer level GPUs. So um, a video card, gaming video card, you might buy for a couple hundred bucks down at Best Buy or something like that. You can run through billions of these, depending on the hashing they use. They can run through billions of these per second. So it can run through that space really fast. And you can chain these cards together. Or maybe they've got a botnet. Uh, that, that where they're taking over a bunch of people's computers or they're using Amazon Web Services. You can scale this up actually pretty quickly. And uh, that's just if they're actually trying to go through every one. But they're smart enough to not even go through every one. They've got uh, pre-computed hashes where uh, somebody's done all the passwords and saved the hashes in a big giant database. So all they have to do is look up the password in a database and it becomes trivial. And there's ways around that that you know, most security providers will use these days. But uh, you've also got dictionary attacks. So, you know, if, you, if your password is the word password, it's going to get cracked in two seconds, even though it's eight characters, uh, because they're going to look that up in the dictionary. They have lists of words and phrases uh, scraped from the web. They've got uh, common tricks that people use. They use, uh, you know, putting numbers at the end, like taking your password and one or password two. They know that, putting a year on it, uh, starting with a capital letter. People do that, ending with an exclamation point, doing a keyboard walk. So you might say, hey, I'll look down at my keyboard and do kind of a zigzag, A, W, 3, E, D, R, 5. That, that looks pretty good, but that's just making a zigzag pattern on the keyboard, and hackers know about that too, and they'll, they'll search for those. Uh, substituting numbers for letters, you know, doing threes for E's and zeros for O's, uh, like in this comic here with the, the troubadour, they know about that, and they'll do that, and that drastically reduces the space of passwords they have to check. And it gets even worse when we get back to the, all those previously leaked and cracked ones with the, the Rock U, Ashley Madison, you know, all those ones that are cracked. Because now they've got millions of password, actual passwords that people use. They can run through those. People reuse them all, all the time. And uh, so it ends up being uh, uh, very fast to crack most passwords. You're not going to get all of them, but you're going to get most of them just by running through those things. And that's really all the hackers care about, unless it's very targeted, in which case they'll look at specific information about you, your spouse's name, your pet's name, kids' names, birth dates, um, stuff like that that make it easy for people to remember ends up making it really easy for the hackers to crack too. So that's why we have to end up with something that's going to be long enough that they're not going to be able to brute force it easily, simple enough for us to remember, but still difficult to crack, which is where something like this comes in that they suggest in the comic. And XKCD wasn't the first one to come up with this. There's a thing called Diceware with a list of words and actual physical dice. And the idea was you'd roll the dice, pick the words, and you'd go on from that. So just a shout out to those guys there. So what are some guidelines? Uh, we want to use a minimum of four dictionary words, uh, more is obviously better, but it can get kind of long at that point. Uh, it should not be a legitimate phrase. If you get something that makes sense directly, then you don't want to use that because uh, that's probably going to get scraped, uh, any kind of legitimate English phrase. Something that you've seen somewhere, like correct horse battery staple from the comic, definitely don't use that. I guarantee <laughs> that's in everybody's list too. And more complexity is always better. If you can do something that makes sense to you that you consistently do but isn't going to be a standard thing like maybe you say every uh, every password the fifth uh, the fifth character is going to be a number that you stick in there or a, a symbol or you're going to capitalize it or something something that you can remember to do every time that's not going to be obvious to a to a hacker and uh, those type of things can do it so you might ask well it's not really that hard or that much easier to remember four random words the thing that they're telling you to do in the last panel is to build a little story about it. So, you know, he's picturing a horse saying, hey, that's a battery staple, and, and he's telling them correct. So 
building that story on whatever comes up, it's going to help you remember it. Makes it a great mnemonic device. And in terms of generating these, because people tend to generate the same things, there's a website called uh, Passphrase, passphrase.se, that uh, will spit some out for you based on uh, the 2,000 most common English words. Uh, so you can use that uh, as a starting point or just take it as it is. But, uh, and also, one of the most important things is that we don't want to reuse this. Uh, if somebody gets your password from one site because maybe they didn't store it very nicely or they figured it out in some other way, you don't want that to let them get into everywhere that you have access to. And KeePass is going to help us with that because it is a hassle. Nobody wants to remember a bunch of passwords, even if they are you know, slightly easier like these ones we're going to talk about, the pass phrases. Nobody wants to remember 30 of them because everybody's got a ton of logins. And that's where these uh, password managers come in. So they're going to create and remember the passwords for you. It's going to save them in an encrypted format. So even if somebody gets that file, it doesn't matter. Uh, all you need to do is remember that one password to get into it, and you're good to go. And there are many kinds. Uh, there are some that are installed programs like KeePass that I'll show you today. Some that are web-based. Uh, there's free ones, paid ones. Uh, LastPass is a really common one. OnePass, AnyPass. Take your pick of whatever works best for you. Just don't use Word, Notepad, a sticky end of the keyboard or on the monitor, because those, those just aren't secure. And then you'll find that KeePass ends up being a lot more convenient, too. So ultimately, though, uh, nothing beats a really long, complex password. So that's what we're going to use KeePass to generate. And we just need that passphrase for that one password to get into KeePass. So now I'll show you the KeePass demo. All right, so this is KeePass. I've got it open here. And you can store any information, not just passwords in it. Uh, I use it for software licensing and inventory tracking and all that because it's a, a nice format. It keeps it all together for me. Uh, but we'll go ahead and start a new database here. Oh, and I should, sorry, I should back up. This is the icon for it down here. I have it pinned. Uh, you can tell it to start with Windows if you want, uh, but otherwise just go to your start menu, type in key pass, and it'll show up. So there are... Uh, it's pre-installed on IDSI computers. If you want to get it for your home computer, uh, that's fine. They also have it for uh, ports for OS X, Linux. Uh, they've got phone versions, and it's just keypass.info. You should never be paying for this. It doesn't come with spyware. There are some people that have tried to repackage it uh, with spyware or to try to sell it. It's Don't don't go that route. If you're doing the keypass one, it should be from keypass.info, totally free, totally adware free. And uh, they've got downloads over there. So these are the main Windows versions up here. If you scroll down, then you can find it for all sorts of different platforms. Uh, Windows Phone, iPhone, Android, etc., etc., Linux, all that good stuff. Um, and, and just to explain the way they do it, they do kind of a weird thing. You know, there's a Classic and Pro. Both of them are free. There's, there's no paid version of this. Uh, this one version is 1.29. This is 2.3 it's weird. Normally that would indicate, oh, I want to go with this one, and maybe this is an old one. They're actually developed in parallel. This one was developed first, but it's not uh, slated to be retired or anything. They both get parallel development. This has some new features, and uh, so this is the one I install and I'd recommend. It's just it's a little weirdness that they do. So basically just ignore the classic edition and stick with the professional. There's no license fees or or any restrictions. And as far as the two options go here, for the uh, the installer is what you'd expect. You're going to download it, run it, it's going to install it, put it in your start menu, all that good stuff. The portable one is a, an interesting option for something like this because it doesn't get installed. You just download it and it runs right from wherever you save it. Uh, so you can put it on a flash drive and keep it with you. Put it in any computer you want. You don't have to have admin rights. You just, you've always got your stuff there and you can load it right up. And uh, if you lose your flash drive, again, it's encrypted, so you don't have to worry about that as long as you have a backup of your file because you don't want to lose your passwords. But uh, I'm sure everybody's got a backup because we all do that. All right. So we create our demo one over here. You have a couple of options here. For the purposes of this demo, uh, ignore this Windows user account one. If you're interested in that, talk to me afterwards. It's got some significant caveats that, that we don't need to go into right now. 
But uh, for the average user, you could just set a password on the database. So, for example, we'll go over here to Passphrase, uh, which was the website I told you about earlier. You can just click Generate to get as many of these as you want. So let's do this one. Cast Total Grass System. So cast Total Grass System. Ah, oh, I didn't type it right. That is one downside of long passwords. There we go. You can also optionally, um, either in combination or by itself, have a key file. So rather than a password, it's an actual file that lives somewhere, like maybe uh, on a flash drive again or something like that, where you unlock it with that file instead of using a password. It's got its own set of implications, um, but again, if you set for for that, you're going to have to make sure you have that because you lose that and you're out of luck. Same thing with this password. There's, you're not going to be able to decrypt this file uh, if you lose this password, so make sure you know this password. But that's the one password that you'll have to remember. It'll do everything else for you. You can give it a name and a description, whatever you want. Uh, most of these aren't really relevant, but uh, you know, feel free to poke through them and see. And you'll notice I have mine open here and this one. So you can have multiple ones open. Like maybe you've got uh, one for work and one for home. You're welcome to have multiple open at the same time. It just switches to a tabbed interface. Uh, it creates some groups over here. These are totally optional. You can add, remove, delete these, uh, whatever you want to do. Create as many as you want. You can have subgroups. Uh, you can rearrange them. Maybe I want to move that one up a, a level. Uh, you can do all these things to just kind of customize it to however it works for you. For the moment, we'll leave these in here uh, as they are. And then here's the, the real meat of it right here. These sample entries are the actual entries in KeyPass. So if I wanted to make a new entry, I can come up here to this key. And so this is where I'm going to store stuff. So maybe, uh, and the title is whatever you want it to be. And we'll talk a little bit about uh, some of the best names for title when we talk about autotype. But for now, we'll just call it demo. Maybe my username is going to go about Michael. And uh, it generates these passwords automatically for us. You can hit this button if you want to customize how that works. Like maybe you want to make sure it's got special characters, because that's a requirement of the system you're trying to log into. Or it can only be 15 characters long, something like that. You tell it what kind of password you want. Hit OK. All right, now we've got a new password. You can get as specific as you want with this. You can tell it to get rid of lookalike characters and not do certain characters. Uh, only include uh, specific characters, however you want to do it. It'll generate that for you. And the best part is you don't ever have to remember this because it's going to uh, remember it for us. You can pick an icon. Maybe you want the, this password to look like that little guy because maybe that's a Skype password. I don't know. So you can set it. It'll give us the quality meter here which it's it based mostly on length and complexity, so it's not the world's greatest, but it's, it's all right for a start. You can put an address in here. So let's see, we said that was Skype, so maybe we'll do Skype.com if I can type it. There we go. Again, notes, whatever you feel like. You can set it to expire at a certain time, like maybe it's a subscription or something like that, or uh, if you want to know when your password is going to expire because there's a policy that every six months it, it expires. You can set that there. When this hits, all it does is change the icon to red, uh, to red X, and puts a dash through it. It does not delete it. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, and of course, you can pick a, a specific time, like hey, six months, it's going to expire. All right. And so now we've created that one there. If we want to get this password out, obviously we can open KeyPass. You could go in here and double click on it, and then copy and paste and go through that hassle. But there's actually an easier way. If we just double click on username there, you can see down here at the bottom, it's copied it to the clipboard. And you'll note it, it said it's cleared it and it's doing a count down here. The reason it does that is for security, because if you have a password sitting in your clipboard, somebody comes to your computer and hits Control V, well, now they've got your whatever password you had saved in there. So clearly we don't want to do that. That's just a bonus security feature. Same thing with the password. I can double click on the password. Now that password is in the clipboard. I could go over to Skype paste it in there, and we'll be good to go. Also, I can click on the URL, and it'll, it'll go to that page, too. Uh, we can drag and drop, move these around, however we want to do it. If we go and delete any of these, uh, as you saw with the, the folder when we deleted that, 
it does put it in the recycle bin, so uh, you're you're pretty safe there. And there's an even easier way to to get this stuff uh, out here. If you want to, instead of double clicking on there, you can actually click on select the one you want, click on there, and then paste it in, and it gets even easier still. This is really just kind of which whichever one you prefer. I want to go to this guy. So for example, uh, say I want to log in to Precision Roller here where I buy some of my supplies. I can go over here, search it for Precision Roller. And by the way, this search up here searches everything. There is an advanced find where you can get crazy with a regular expression to tell it you just want to search the title or the URL uh, or whatnot. But this will search all the fields. You can see some expired entries down here. I can go over here and hit Precision Roller. And if I hit this auto type button here, it's going to go to the last window I was in and start typing the username and password for me. I'm actually going to have to clear that out, otherwise it's going to get confused. There we go. So just type that for me. I didn't have to do anything, and it can log me in. We can even get faster than that if you want to remember the keyboard shortcut is Control-Alt-A. If you have uh, key pass open and the title of the entry matches the title of the window. So this up here. So it's got precision, uh, precision roller up there, I think, somewhere. Oh, no, it doesn't in this case. I'll talk about that. Then you can actually hit Control-Alt-A, and it'll find that match. And there you go. If there's multiple that it matches, it'll bring up a window saying, which one of these do you want? If there's not one that matches, it just doesn't do anything. All right, so we've talked about that. Clear the keyboard, the password generation. All right. And we're almost out of time. So what if you go to a site that doesn't have uh, the specific thing you want in there? For example, this one, it actually is a good example of that. It just talks about printer cartridges. It doesn't actually say precision roller in the title anywhere. So given that uh, what it searches for in, in the title of the window is what you put here in this title field. So I don't have precisionroller.com anywhere up in there, so how did I get it to do that? What I did was uh, on the auto type field, I can tell it this is the specific window I want. I can say, uh, uh, click here, add, and it's going to show me my list of open windows, and uh, yeah, that's the one I want. So when I see one that says that, that's the one I type. And if you need to, uh, because it doesn't normally, you're, it's going to do a, tab, a username, type the username, hit tab, which should take you to the password field, and then type the password, and then hit enter. If for some reason you don't want that, maybe they've got an extra thing in there, so you have to hit tab twice, or uh, it's just uh, the password because you've already got the username saved, you can customize that in here too. It's pretty uh, flexible with that, and, and uh, it gives you some of the standard fields down here, but feel free to ask me any questions if you, if you want some help with that. It's fairly easy to script. And now, so now I've told it that when it sees that window, that's the precision roller window that I want. Right. So it leaves this open as long as you have it here, unless you set a timeout specifically, which is in the options. Uh, you can lock the workspace. So if I uh, walk away from it and I know I want to uh, leave this locked for security purpose, I can hit that and then I have to enter the password uh, again to get into it. Uh, what else do we want to talk about? So it can import and export as well. So uh, say you start using this, you want to move to a different program. Maybe you want to do LastPass or something like that. You can export uh, your passwords here. Uh, you can import them from another program. It, it has support for a lot of uh, password programs over here. Uh, or even if you got it in a plain text file, as long as it's formatted well, uh, you know, with commas separating things and whatnot, you can actually just pull in that plain text file and have it take care of that for you too. Uh, it can. Uh, you can add different plugins that lets you uh, do different types of encryption or other uh, added functionality. It's got tons of different language packs if you need to do language, uh, different language. Uh, you can actually attach files to it under uh, advanced, uh, put an attachment in there and pick any file you want and it's going to uh, store that right in the database with it. Uh, yeah, and uh, there are options also for excluding from search if you want to uh, make sure that something doesn't get included in the search. Like we don't, these guys say are are sensitive, and I don't want to don't 
don't want them to show up, or maybe I just they're old ones and I don't care about seeing them. So you can say, yeah, I don't I don't want searches to search in there. So again, that's pretty fast. Uh, this is all being recorded, so you can watch it again, or of course call me if you have any questions. Uh, but does anybody have any questions for now? We are about out of time. Uh, I have to. This is Joe. Sure. Is, can, is, would um, uh, sync between the the mobile and PC devices? Like if you update one, it'll update the other. Uh, because this is file based, uh, you will have to find some way of syncing the file. Uh, outside of this, whether it's you know, through Google Drive or manually copying it over, uh, KeePass itself does not handle that. You have to find some way of getting the file back and forth. Um, that is one downside of it and why uh, you might consider something like a, a LastPass or uh, I believe it's a web-based one that might be a little bit easier. The downside of the web-based ones is, of course, you have to be online, but for mobile these days, that's not, uh, not too bad. It does have an option. I'm sorry, go ahead. I saw a, a note section on, under, like, when you filled in the key with the username mm -hmm. and password and all that. Is there, it's not important, but is there also a place for like, putting in the uh, security questions and answers? They always make many emails sometimes. Yeah, that's what I usually put in the notes. Uh, okay. Yeah, so I'll just, you know, security question is this, the answer is this. Yeah, the notes is literally whatever you want to put into it. And like I said, I use it for software uh, licensing and stuff too, so it's not just for passwords. It's really pretty free form. Uh, it does have some synchronization, synchronizing with files or URLs um, that might help with getting your mobile sync, but you'd probably have an easier time just using uh, Google Drive or something like that and, and syncing it up that way. Uh, the browser plugins for KeePass, I personally don't use them. They do have uh, browser plugins that let you get a little bit deeper integration with the browser. Uh, so I have to give you a button in the browser or uh, I believe you can uh, possibly have it get more information instead of just the title, like have it look at the actual URL you're on. Uh, I personally haven't used those because the control A and uh, the uh, setting the window title with uh, under auto type there has really been all I need. I didn't feel any need to, to add more, but that is an option out there. Hmm? Several versions in Google Play. All right. So for that, what I would say is, uh, right. So the question uh, in the chat was, there are several versions in Google Play. Which one do I go for? The KeePass site will have a link to, there's not an official one, but uh, the KeePass site will use it. I use KeePass Droid right here. This one is the one I use. So again, totally free, uh, and it uh, works pretty well. This is the interface you'll see on the Android one. But, uh, but yeah, I'd refer to the keypass.info site. Uh, we'll tell you, we'll give you links to the, the approved ones. All right. Well, again, if anybody has any questions, feel free to give me a call or uh, rewatch this. I'll post this up to YouTube in a couple of days. I'll just have to get the recording set up. And uh, thank you all for attending. <laughs>